So in this video, I want to talk about the remote packet capture. What I mean by remote packet capture is uh, uh, capturing the packet in the remote machine and uh, display it in local machine, you know, in real time using the Wireshark. I don't mean, you know, capturing the packet in the remote machine and uh, save it to the file system and uh, copy it over and open it in the local machine using the Wireshark. What I mean is, uh, you know, capturing the packet in the remote machine in real time and uh, transport it over TCP IP network and uh, display it in the local machine using the Wireshark. So here is the topology that I have. So, you know, this is uh, my the local machine, the MacBook. And uh, for the remote machine, I prepared uh, this uh, open to reality router. So this is a open to reality router. So I'm using open to reality router, but you know this can be just any Linux machine with a you know TCP IP installed. And if you check the interface in here, so this is the interface that is uh, connected uh, to. Uh, this network in here. So my local machine is uh, in the same network as uh, this uh, remote machine, but it doesn't have to be really in the same, you know, same network as long as they have uh, TCP IP, you know, connectivity. And uh, this machine has a uh, uh, TCP dump installed. And uh, this, you know, this one, you know, this machine also has that the one Wi-Fi interface, you know, called WLAN. Um, so this is a uh, just a USB adapt, you know, adapter based on RT5570, you know, 5572. Uh, okay, so let's see, um, you know, how we can do this. The first way, I mean, there are several ways uh, you can do the remote packet capture, but the first way is using the SSH and then TCP dump. So here is the you know, command format. So basically what it does is, uh, you know, you SSH into this remote machine and uh, run this TCP command and, uh, you know, pipe it to the Wireshark and then open it. So let's execute this command. So here, uh, you know, there is one more option in here. So basically, I'm SS, you know, I'm doing the pack capture on the interface where I SSH in. So that is why, you know, I'm filtering out uh, SSH packet, you know, the port 2022. So I'm gonna copy this. And uh, so this is my, uh, my remote machine in here. And this is my local machine. And uh, I'm gonna end the command, and then this is gonna open up and uh, the wire shock. But right now, nothing is happening because it is waiting for me to enter the password, you know, SSH password. So I'm gonna enter the password in here. And uh, as you can see now, it is a uh, you know, it is uh, displaying the packet capture. So basically what is happening here right now is uh, uh, it is uh, capturing the packet in here on this interface and uh, displaying in the Wireshark in my local machine in here. So if, uh, you know, I ping, for example, so from my local machine, I'm pinging to this remote machine and uh, you can see that you know this ICMP equity cast and then equity fly packet. So you know this proves that actually I'm doing that the remote packet capture on the remote machine. Okay, so I'm gonna stop this. So if you are a little bit creative, then uh, you can actually do the you know, Wi-Fi packet capture. Uh, 802.11 packet capture on the remote machine and then display in local machine. So here is the command in here. So basically what I'm doing here is uh, I'm, this is just uh, uh, you know to break the command. I mean this command is too long so that this is uh, just uh, to break the command you know to the next line but this is basically uh, 
line continuation uh, uh, you can put I mean basically you can put all this command in one uh, one line but you know just I'm I'm just breaking up the command to the different line using this uh, line continuation you know uh, so what I'm doing here is uh, ISSH into this remote machine and uh, put uh, this uh, you know, Wi-Fi interface into the monitor mode and then set the channel to 149 and then basically I'm executing the same command here you know run the TCP dump on the Wi-Fi interface and the feed into the wire shock in here uh, by the way you know all the options that I'm using in here uh, you can find or you know you can find uh, more information about the options in uh, in uh, in the link in here uh, but if I explain briefly minus u means you know don't buff the packet you know just the print you know print out uh, immediately as soon as it captures the packet and the minus w means you know write the packet to the file system uh, and the uh, dash means standard output so basically it is writing the packet to the standard output and uh, here in the wireshark minus k means you know start capturing immediately and the minus i is uh, to specify the interface uh, uh, to capture the packet and then again you know this is uh, just the standard input uh, so I'm gonna execute this command and then let's see what happens so basically remember this I mean uh, to capture you know the raw 802.11 Wi-Fi packet we have to put the Wi-Fi interface into the monitor mode first and then you know uh, then you know we should run we should uh, we should run the TCP dump on that Wi-Fi interface so let's check uh, so let's let's check that the uh, Wi-Fi interface in the remote machine first so basically this is a US you know USB adapter based on RT5572 uh, I mean you can you can buy you know this adapter in the eBay if just the search that RT5572 in eBay then you know you will see that the adapter and uh, it is uh, this USB adapter is a dual band so it has a uh, 5 gig it supports 5 gigahertz and uh, it also supports 2.4 you know 2.4 gigahertz and uh, as you can see you know it is supporting that the monitor mode as well and uh, yeah so you know it is a HT you know HT high throughput capable meaning that you know this is a 802.11n Wi-Fi adapter so uh, this is a remote machine okay in the local machine so I'm gonna enter this command and then execute again nothing is happening so I'm gonna enter the password here and now you can see that the row 802.11 Wi-Fi packets you know being displayed in the wire shop in here if you inspect the packet cap you know the, the this packet then you can see that you know this is a uh, channel 149 which is uh, what we set in this command uh, so I'm gonna stop here so let's try one more time I'm gonna change the channel this time to uh, channel 11 and then try one more time just to prove that uh, uh, I'm doing that the real time, you know, Wi-Fi packet capture in the remote machine and then display in the local machine. So, so this time, uh, we are gonna set, you know, Wi-Fi channel to 11, and then you know, display in the local machine. So again, it displays Wi-Fi packet in here, and if you inspect the packet then this is a channel 11 you know this actually proves that uh, you know we are doing that the Wi-Fi packet capture in the remote machine and then display in the local machine right. let's stop so this is a one way of doing the remote packet capture you know the using the SSH and then TCP dump and uh, another way to you know Another way to do the remote packet capture is using SSH dump feature in the Wireshark. So basically, 
under the hood it is uh, you know it is working the same way so actually you can think that you know this this functionality is actually built in in the wireshark and it is called ssh dump so let me open up the ss uh the wireshark and then let's see how it works so once you open up the wireshark then you will see this option you know ssh remote packet capture uh ssh dump so if you don't see this, you know, this interface, then uh, what you have to do is uh, uh, during the installation, uh, you are going to have to select, you know, this SSH dump feature. So by default, this is not selected so that if, you know, when you install the Wireshark, if you just uh, click through, then you are not going to see, you know, this, uh, you know, this interface. So what you have to do in that case is, uh, you know, uninstall the Wireshark and then reinstall the Wireshark again. But this time, you know, select this SSH dump. Okay. So let's let's uh, see how this works. So before the recording, actually, I tested this feature. That's why you see some configuration in here. So this is uh, again my remote machine. You know, obviously, you know, SSH port is a 22, and uh, here you put SSH login credential, and uh, in the capture, basically I'm running the same command that uh, that you know I used in the command line in here. So here I'm gonna start. Uh, so as you can see, uh, you know, I'm doing the Wi-Fi packet capture on the remote machine and then displaying the local machine using uh, Wireshark built-in function called SSH dump. So this is uh, another way of uh, doing remote packet capture using SSH dump in the Wireshark. Right? Okay, so then some people may ask you know how we can do the same thing in the in the windows machine because in the linux or mac os x uh, it has you know they have a built-in ssh client you know functionality that is why we can run you know these commands right but can we do the same thing in the windows machine of course in the windows you can use that the wireshark ssh dump you know dump function uh, but can we do the same thing in the DOS command line. Yeah, yes, of course. Uh, but you have to use that uh, the program called the plink. Uh, you can, you know, you can download the plink from, you know, plink program from uh, uh, this website in here. So basically, plink is uh, uh, what is behind uh, the putty, you know, putty program. Putty is a uh, basically the Windows SSH uh, client program but that's just the front end you know the front end and then in the under the hood you know plink it is using plink program and uh, this is the form you know format how you can use the plink to do the same thing in here so uh, plink.exe and then you have to specify the pro you know the protocol that you are gonna use so in this case SSH uh, you know, P-Link is uh, capable of uh, more than just SSH. You know, it, it is capable of uh, SCP and SFTP as well. So that is why you have to specify SSH in here and then specify the password. And then, you know, basically you run the same command. So this is the command that, that uh, we are going to run. So let's go to the Windows machine and then let's do the demonstration so this is the Windows machine that I prepared so basically this Windows machine is uh, in the same network as uh, uh, my MacBook and then uh, this remote machine so here so this is the command that I'm gonna execute so I'm gonna copy and paste So as you can see now we are doing that the uh, Wi-Fi packet capture and the uh, displaying in the local you know Windows machine. So this time we didn't uh, really have to enter the password manually because you know 
we can provide password in the p link uh, option you know in the p link option so that's nice actually so i'm gonna stop okay so you know we can go one step further so we can put some command in the batch file uh, and then you know execute we, we can just uh, double click that batch file to execute you know uh, to execute this command right so this you know that's exactly what I did in here so you know in in this file I put a uh, first you know I put the command to put Wi-Fi interface into the monitor mode and then just wait one minute uh, one second and then I you know I start uh, this remote packet capture program so let's see you know how this works so I'm just gonna double click this batch file you know if you remember you know the the Wi-Fi you know interface was in channel 11 before but now we are setting it to channel 149 and then you know started the packet capture right so let's see if uh, you know uh, this packet is uh, on channel you know 149 so as you can see this is a uh, you know channel 149 right so that means that you know actually this is working so uh, now now actually you can see you know p-link is quite useful especially when you have to do some automation uh, when you are working with a remote machine in the windows and then we have to you know we have to do some automation then uh, p-link is quite useful actually you can put you know the commands in the patch file and then you know execute uh, as I just showed you right uh, so now uh, we saw you know how we can do the same thing you know how we can do the remote packet capture in the windows machine as well so la the, the last way to do the remote packet capture is uh, uh, using the program called uh, rpkpd rpkpd stands for remote packet capture daemon so this is the link for this github project but i'm gonna do this uh, in uh, another video because you know this needs some explanation and then also you have to compile the, you know this program so that is why i'm gonna do this uh, in some other video not in this video because it is getting a little bit longer right now so uh, here are some useful links that uh, I used and then by the way you know this file will be available in my git repository so you don't really have to remember you know, all these commands it will be available in my git repository so uh, I hope you know this uh, tutorial was uh, useful for some people so uh, thanks yeah bye